This is the uh, latest we have from inside the Soyuz capsule. Uh, British astronaut Tim Peake, along with Tim Copra from the uh, US and Yuri Malachenko from Russia, the three astronauts that are due to blast off uh, from Kazakhstan just after 11 o'clock this morning up to the International Space Station. They're carrying out their pre-flight checks at the moment. Uh, we don't think this is live. We now think it is live. I'm actually yeah. also seeing some pictures which we'll play, around, we'll play with and turn around very quickly, uh, showing some of these rituals that go back to 1961, the first successful flight by Yuri Gagarin into low Earth orbit. For instance, they watch the same film on the eve of blast-off. Uh, they, they do a number of other things, not all of which are repeatable necessarily. But they also sign their, their, their accommodation doors. There it is. And when you think that uh, 220 astronauts and cosmonauts have been on board the International Space Station since 2000, uh, that's quite a lot of signage. Not all of them, of course, have blasted off from Kazakhstan, many of them from the United States as well. But since the shuttle stopped flying to the ISS, the, the, the workhorse has become the Soyuz craft, so everything that's going to the ISS is going, in a sense, uh, if it's bearing astronauts, it's coming from uh, Kazakhstan. And as yesterday, we saw the spacecraft being blessed by an orthodox priest. So today, uh, the astronauts and cosmonaut as well, and the spare crew uh, lined up behind them. And this is the last chance that they'll have had to see their families as well. We know that Tim Peake's family's out there with him. His wife, Rebecca, uh, four-year-old Oliver, and Thomas, who's six, out there as well. Uh, some fist bumps are allowed, but he's had to be separated from them for the last couple of days, just so that he doesn't take infection with them up to the International Space Station. How can he do fist, pump, fist bumps? He just did there. Well, he did, but they're meant to be quarantined, aren't they? So unless they take any disease into space where the effects were more serious than they would be on Earth. Well, there's a limit to how much disease you can get from a gloved fist <laughs> <laughs> He continues to be, all oh, actually, look remarkably relaxed. I suppose the amount of testing uh, in terms of the process that's led them to this position, it was actually originally on the internet that Tim Peake, who was flying army helicopters, some lovely scenes. Yeah, saying goodbye to the, the children, isn't it sweet? Um, so all the testing that's been done, they've been evaluated to within an inch of their lives, you can be sure, to make sure they've got the right stuff. And, and he is, of course, it's his uh, first flight. It's the first Briton to go up there to the International Space Station. But, but Tim Copra and Yuri Milinchenko that he's travelling with are both very experienced. It's Tim Copra's second flight. Uh, Yuri Milinchenko is the mission commander, the Russian on board, very experienced. He's done five flights so far, 641 days in space. So perhaps no surprise that, that he is pretty relaxed. He, he's an old hand at this. Yeah. And all this suiting up. Uh, processes they're put into their spacesuits takes a long time. A lot of the technology is uh, is pretty whiskery. I mean, the Soyuz itself first flew in the late 1960s, so it's incredibly dated. And if you look at um, some of the, the apparatus on the launch pad itself, it looks, if not rusty and tired, uh, then it certainly looks dated. But the Russians take the view that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, it's proved remarkably successful. You could argue more successful than more uh, modern space vehicles. Uh, the obvious example, tragically, being the Space Shuttle, which is no longer flying, of course. Um, but they'll have been through this many, many times in simulations. And the, the pressure trousers they wear as well, the pressure suit, of course, their bodies will be going through G-forces. It's all about keeping the blood up in the, in the head to stop them blacking out on takeoff. Um, which ordinary jet fighter pilots wear as well. And, of course, being a, a former test pilot, Tim Peake will know all about that. And this is a very long process, getting into their suits. It takes a, a couple of hours, I do believe, to get actually suited up before they then go into uh, the capsule and then prepare, do all the pre-flight preparations that they have to carry out before the launch, uh, around an hour and 13 minutes away from that now. And uh, one thing we, we haven't mentioned this morning, but it's, it, we've been trying to uh, get hold of David Willits. <laughs> Old two brains, David Willits, 
um, the former science minister, because in a sense, he's the reason why you're looking at these pictures. Uh, because the British government hitherto took the view that it was going to back unmanned space exploration, but a science minister, David Willett, said no. In terms of inspiring the next generation, we're going to support the European uh, space uh, manned programme, and that's the reason why a little belatedly, you might argue, obviously Helen Sharman uh, flew 25 years ago, first British astronaut, but that was a privately funded mission to the Mir space station. This is officially sanctioned, government funded, and he will be, Tim Peake, when he, we hope, successfully arrives on the International Space Station, the first British astronaut to reach the ISS. The first time we've seen that, that Union Jack flag on the arm of a... An astronaut and the mission, the, miss, the mission badge, there. the mission badge. Obviously, each mission has its own badge as well. Interesting as well. I'm not sure you, you can pick it out, but it's it's got an apple on the badge. Indeed. It's the Principia uh, mission, and Tim Peake's the reason for that. He wanted it to be in honour of Isaac Newton. Yeah, named after Newton's work in 1687 that laid out the laws of motion and gravity. There was a competition to design. Uh, this particular badge uh, won by a little boy from the UK and he designed it with an apple and it's also got the colours of the Union flag around the outside of this badge as well as a, a replica of the rocket that they're going up in. And there was just behind them a picture of the International Space Station. We keep trying to give you a sense of what it's like <clears throat> on the ISS, the scale involved about the size of a football pitch. Uh, which doesn't quite capture it, but you get a broad sense of what we're talking about. £100 billion it took to assemble uh, from 1998 onwards. Uh, it's been 15 years in orbit, uh, at its current orbit. Finally completed, of course, they were just bolting bits on, laboratories, living capsules, all the rest of it. Finally completed fully, as you see it behind them in that picture, in 2008. <clears throat> And orbits some 240 miles above the Earth. It's in a constant state, effectively, of free fall at 17 and a half thousand miles, such that the sun sets and rises no fewer than 16 times in any given day. And this is one of the reasons that, that carrying out experiments up there is so fascinating, as well as all the weightlessness and all those things that come with it. They're looking at the effects of. Uh, on your body clock of suns rising and setting 16 times a day, what effect that has on you. So that, that is part of the experiments. Three crew are already up there, of course. Uh, they said goodbye to some of their colleagues just a couple of days ago. Uh, they'll be interested, obviously, to have some new workmates, some new people to spend time with in, in really close, close proximity. It takes a certain kind of person who can successfully do something like that to, to stay in this very, very small space for up to six months at a time with people that you know, you're not particularly friendly with, well, probably, but, but you certainly know jolly well by yeah. the end of six months. I saw an email this morning from somebody saying how do they manage to hold it all together and get on with uh, people perhaps that they, uh, they disagree decision, with decisions that have been made on their behalf. They've got small living quarters, no bigger than a phone booth, that they can zip up. Uh, and privacy is obviously a big part of what they do. This looks like one of the two, bo the two boys. Yeah. Thomas and Oliver, they, this was his last chance to have a chat with them through, through the glass uh, just before he set off. And I'm guessing that that is uh, Tim Copper's family uh, from the US. Yeah. As well as um, Tim Peake's wife, Rebecca, and children, his mum and dad are out there as well, Nigel and Angela enormously proud of what their sons achieved. Uh, they always knew you wanted to be a pilot. They never thought we'd see the day. There they yeah, are, yeah, uh, to yeah. the right of the frame. They never thought we'd see the day, but he, he, he made it into space. His father said he worries more about Tim Peake travelling down the M27 in Hampshire <laughs> <laughs> than he does about flying into space. And it's worth bearing in mind as you look at this that Tim Peake, Tim Peake has seen his training and now this mission as an opportunity to proselytise, really, on behalf of manned space flight. He's uh, keen to talk about things like how the International Space Station ultimately will become a staging post, potentially in the colonisation of both the Moon and ultimately Mars as well. And uh, coupled at that with the fact you've got people like Elon Musk, internet billionaire, who are pumping lots of private sector cash now into space exploration as well. So what you're looking at here, which is government-funded uh, space exploration, is only part of the story of what's happening in terms of manned flight into near-Earth orbit and beyond. And his role out there is, is part maintenance, it's part making sure that the ISS uh, stays working, stays operational, and part scientific. 265 experiments to be carried out by Tim Peake over the next six months. Going to be looking at, 
at, at growing blood vessels, how that works in space, what's the effect of weightlessness on that, how protein crystals are formed, and also about melting alloys, about working out uh, the structure of metal, and if that could be used back on Earth to make metal uh, lighter, easier to use, more efficient. It's always that question that people ask, isn't it? Why are we spending all this money on space exploration? One of the answers to that question, Royal well, Navy flag in the background, uh, the Royal Ensign, uh, one of the answers to that question, of course, is that oftentimes there are unforeseen positive byproducts. Um, some of the, the best examples being Teflon, isn't it? Wasn't Teflon used for the original Apollo moonshots? Uh, now we all have it on our frying pans. Well, if you, you've, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's um, going to be doing a lot of keeping fit up there as well. He's a, a really keen athlete and. One of the things he's going to be doing while he's marathon up there is run, running. The, he? he's, yeah, he's going to run the London Marathon up there at the same time, uh, and he's also off, offering a, a chance for children at, at schools uh, to take part. Uh, it's a, a project called Space to Earth Challenge. This is to get youngsters to exercise alongside him. The idea is that, that youngsters try to cover 250 miles, which is the distance from space to Earth over the six months that he's up there. Well, there you go. In just over an hour. Major Tim Peake will become the first British astronaut. There he is, life pic latest pictures from inside the Soyuz capsule. They get two hours in there before the launch, which is just over an hour away from now on the Kazakhstan step in Baikonur. We'll bring it to you live here on Sky.